Hi again, Rick here with the next part of the early Starfleet lore vids. Last time we looked at how the Vulcans had shaped the direction of the fledgling Starfleet, and today we're looking at how the Romulans, Earth's first interstellar enemy, kinda, inadvertently created the Federation. One thing is fundamental to understanding how the Romulan government and military works, they are a paranoid and xenophobic species, therefore the Romulans, perpetually suspicious, don't like not being in control, and they have been determined, since their exodus from Vulcan, to be the masters of their own destiny. To do this, they sought to maintain their supremacy in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants through the doctrine of unlimited expansion. Through might or guile, what they could conquer, they could control. In the 22nd century, the Romulan Star Empire was smaller than it would later become, but undeniably one of the strongest powers around. The other future major players, such as Andorians, Tellarites, and the Klingons, were very much still smaller powers looking at their own interests, and this suited the Romulans very well. After all, if a nation or power is looking inwards, it's only itself, it becomes much easier to manipulate than one that is seeking to secure alliances and build relations. The worst threat to them was probably the Klingons, with the occasional raids on their colonies, but the Klingon Empire at this time was too fractured to really offer any real threat. The Romulans placed spies throughout the Alpha Quadrant rather easily, as their physical appearance was generally unknown, and they conducted many of their activities through the use of drone ships or proxies. They defended their territory with extensive cloaked minefields, a technology with little competition, and generally worked from behind the scenes. As their Vulcan ancestry was a secret, many would have been able to pass as Vulcans on cursory inspection, so who knows exactly how far their undercover network reached in the 22nd century. However, their most ambitious project was the infiltration of their cousin species' government. They had agents, or at least sympathisers, within the Vulcan High Command itself, most notably Administrator Velas, who held great political sway. It's not confirmed in canon, but I have a theory that the Romulan involvement in Vulcan affairs had been going on for decades, maybe even centuries, and had at least taken advantage of shifting interpretations of the teachings of Surak to effectively stigmatise the telepathic practices of Vulcans, leading to their eventual ban in society. After all, what better way to hide among telepaths than to deny them their powers? The Vulcans of the 22nd century were also much more suspicious and cynical of other species than their latter portrayals in Trek would show them to be. The Vulcans built listening posts along the Andorian border, treated humanity as downright irresponsible at times, and mobilised military force at the drop of a hat. These all strike me as the hallmarks of a Romulan approach rather than a Vulcan one. And even if not directly the result of Romulan machinations, those under the banner of the Raptor certainly benefited from the Vulcan's actions. So with agents consistently unbalancing their neighbouring powers, a secure defensive line created by mines and cloaking technology unrivalled by their contemporaries, the Romulans successfully watched and manipulated from behind the scenes with even their appearance a mystery. Then enter some muddy little damp planet named after dirt and its native populace of varied primate evolutions which upset all of that. Humanity had been growing quickly after breaking the Warp 2 barrier, and despite Vulcan efforts to slow the pace of their development, again I smell a hidden Romulan involvement, Starfleet was striving even further into space and encountering new species. Things truly rang alarm bells for the Romulans, however, when Starfleet began to demonstrate a successful ability to balance its alliance with the Vulcans with a decent relation with their longtime antagonists, the Andorians. This showed that Earth was a bigger issue than first realised, not for what they were, but what they represented. Their rapid growth notwithstanding, humans had proven time and time again adept at forging alliances, and through that, facilitating a unity between former rival powers. They even got the Tellarites and Andorians talking. Romulan analysts predicted quite accurately that such actions risked forming a political superpower that outclassed the Star Empire. This was a threat to Romulan superiority, and therefore, in their paranoid view, a threat to their safety. 
The key to their success had been the divided nature of their nearby competitors, and seeing them slowly being brought together, the Romulans felt pressured to take more drastic actions to destabilise Earth. On top of this, the rediscovery of the Kishara, the original unedited teachings of Surak alongside the remnants of the man's Katra, began a reformation in Vulcan society that forced out Velas, and had the Vulcans begin to drastically reconsider the direction they were taking. Again, humanity's influence was at play, undoing the status quo that had served the Star Empire for centuries. In 2154, the Romulans initiated the Babel Crisis. Using an unmanned drone vessel with advanced holographic and scrambling technology, the Romulans were able to create a series of false flag operations to interrupt relations between species such as the Andorians and Tellarites. More strikes by this drone, however, began to tip Starfleet off at the meddling of a third party, and finally aware of being duped, the Romulans accidentally ensured that the Andorians, humans, Tellarites and Vulcans would work together to uncover the Romulan plot. The unfortunate Romulan behind this plan was former Senator Valdor, a man who would seemingly redeem himself enough during the coming conflicts to have a Romulan ship class named after him. A joint task force of 128 ships was formed to catch the Romulan drone, and now aware of the threat posed by the Star Empire, the four species entered into a coalition with each other for defence in 2155. Not to mention many other governments who wished to be involved in this historic alliance in some manner or other, such as the Denobulans and Rigelians. Now on guard for the Romulans, what eventually followed was the Earth-Romulan War of 2156-2160. to During this four-year skirmish, the Romulans successfully managed to maintain the secrecy of their lineage, and no one was able to report on ever having met a Romulan. The Star Empire probed and prodded at the Coalition's lines for months, but for them, Earth was the target, seen as the glue that held the Coalition together, so Starfleet bore the brunt of the aggression. Despite this, the others in the Coalition did lend their aid in supporting Starfleet against the Empire, and there were many recorded battles such as the Battle of Galondon Kor. This conflict saw Admiral Chulak of the Star Empire crash into the planet at warp, causing an ecological disaster that left the planet in its current uninhabitable state. In 2160, the Battle of Cheren marked the final conflict. What began as purely a Starfleet strike against a Romulan shipyard ended up becoming a decisive victory when Coalition forces arrived to aid Starfleet and overwhelm the Romulans. Following this, the Star Empire opened audio-only subspace communication with the Coalition and entered into a treaty with their enemies to define a neutral zone of space along the Romulan border, which would not be crossed, supposedly ensuring both powers left one another alone. As for the Coalition of Planets, seeing the success of their joint operations over the past few years and the progress they could make together, the four founding species drew up a new charter for a larger, more permanent alliance in the form of the United Federation of Planets. Naturally, the Romulans learned their lesson and decided not to mess with the UFP ever again. Of course they didn't, but that's all for another day. Thanks for watching, and as before, if there's a topic around the early years of Starfleet you'd like to see, let me know and I'll set about researching it. Until the next one, I've been Rick, thanks again, and goodbye.